Greetings, all you miraculous people out there. I'm Deuce Dizdin, coming to you with another episode review of Miraculous Ladybug. This time talking about Season 3, Episode 1, titled Chameleon, which begins as any good school-setting Japanese anime inspired series should begin with a young girl running to school late with a piece of bread in her mouth. Naturally being a French show, she Marinette is running with a croissant in her mouth and this image looks uh compromising. Moving on, as we can see, a lot of the kids in Marinette's class have had a reshuffling of the seating order. Ultimately, Marinette believes that um, Alia had done this in order to get Marinette the opportunity to sit next to Adrian. However, we come to find out this was for the benefit of Lila. <laughs> despite Marinette's cute little fantasies. You know, it was in order for Lila, who is returning to school, to have the ability to actually hear, as she apparently has tinnitus and cannot properly hear from further back in the classroom. You know, naturally Marinette tries to call her out on this, but it doesn't quite work, and Lila just tries to get closer to Adrian, saying that he will be the one to help her kind of, you know, regain her bearing in class, kind of help her study up on what needs to be done. Um, ultimately, Adrian says he'll sit in the back of the class since it's apparent that Marionette wants to sit towards the front. So, and both Lila and Marinette are just like, no, don't go. And, you know, there's this big fuss over the whole situation. With Lila ultimately saying she'll go to the back since Marinette wants to sit up front so much. So you can see where this is going. Where Marinette ends up looking like the bad guy in all of this. I personally do not care for storylines like this, where there's this big liar and everyone buys into it. Because it's just like, no, you should be able to trust the rest of your friends and the people around you with what's going on. But unfortunately, that's not the case, as ultimately M Marinette ends up in the back and Lila ends up trying to flirt her way into Adrian's heart. As Marinette grows more and more angry about the situation, naturally this makes her, of all things, a target for Hawkmoth, which is something I'd always wondered about. What would happen should Marinette try to, well, become enraged enough to become in the sights of Hawkmoth? However, as we see, Marinette takes a deep breath and the accumulation doesn't happen. You know. She, her rage kind of subsides for the moment, which takes Hawkmoth off guard for a moment. He's just like, wait, what happened to all the creamy rage filling? But he's just like, nope, no, nope, it's still there, so the Akuma will lie in wait for when everything boils over. And as everyone dotes on Lila, who says she has a injured wrist because of arthritis, um, they bring her all this food and such. Uh, and she just plays it up. She's milking it for all it's worth. But Marinette calls out to Alia and Nino saying, no, she's lying. It's not true. She's a perpetual fibber. And she goes into the details of what happened in Lila's debut episode where she had just, you know, said to Adrian that she was a friend of Ladybug and they they were close personal acquaintances and all this. However, Nino kind of calls out Marinette for eavesdropping, and Alia says that Marinette should have more proof than just hearsay. Uh, and Marinette can't rightly go on to say that I'm Marinette, so of course I know that she's not friends with Ladybug. I mean... You get what I mean. Um, so she throws a napkin towards Lila to get Lila to catch it with her dominant hand to show that her wrist is not injured. But Lila plies it off by making it off 
like this was reflex, so she caught it, but she's just like, oh no, my wrist, I did it on impulse, that injured me even more, which turns everyone even more against Marinette. But Lila plays it off like, oh, Marinette was just handing it to me. You know, she was trying to be sweet and all this good stuff. And this just enrages Marinette even more, who goes storming off. But Lila catches up to her and is just like, oh, I get it. You wanted to sit next to Adrian. Well, maybe I can make that happen and blah, 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 blah. And Marinette has enough and just calls Lila out on all of this. It's just like, I can't prove any of this, but I know you're lying. However, Lila, in a bit of a nice twist that I really enjoy, is just like, well, so what? You know, so what if you know I'm lying? It's like everyone else is eating it up, and you're pretty much destroying your friendship by trying to prove me wrong. So, you know, she starts to threaten Marinette. It's just like, listen, either you're with me or you're against me. And if you're against me, I make your life a living hell. And so Marinette ends up just brooding in the bathroom stall and Tiki tries to console her. But Marinette is just so aggravated, which leaves her prey once again to Hawkmoth. And she ends up trying to dodge the Akuma that comes after her. Meanwhile, Lila tries her best in order to get Adrian on her her side be like yeah you should help me study this and that but Adrian kind of calls her out it's just like look I'll help you out but you gotta stop the perpetual lying which immediately gets him on Lila's bad side and as Lila goes storming off you know Marinette manages to you know calm herself and think some positive thoughts in order to get the Akuma to once again flee I love Hawk Moth during this episode because he's just like, what's going on? Like, it, it might, it, am I not like sensing this wrong? Why does it keep just leaving? But he senses Lila's just, you know, intense bitter feelings, which is just bubbling up over everything. Marinette, Adrian, Ladybug, you know, her hate just continues to be a rising factor. And she meets up with Ikuma. And again, Lila just continues to be a more willing victim for Akumatization. And as Marinette turns into Ladybug to go and capture the Akuma, Lila just brings the Akuma herself into her earring and talks directly to Hawk Moth. Not, not Hawk Moth trying to talk to her and influence her thoughts. Lila talks to Hawk Moth. And it's just like, yo, I'll help you out and we will destroy and take down Ladybug together. Power me up, baby. It's just like, you hate Ladybug? I hate Ladybug. Let's talk, fam. And Hawk Moth is all too willing to oblige. He's just like, oh, word? You, you down for this? Well, I'll give you a new power. You, you gonna get it, girl. You gonna get it. And so Lila, powered up in a kumatized form, now actually more cognizant of what she's doing, which is the biggest factor. It's just like she's not under Hawk Moth's control. She's doing things her way and so she tries to you know reconcile with Adrian and give him a kiss only for us to find out that her ability is chameleon shape-shifting and anyone she kisses she could turn into the form of and send them into a deep sleep until she kisses someone else <coughs> so she goes about terrorizing Adrian's friends and, you know, steals Nino's hat and goes jumping around off to the uh, Eiffel Tower, which it should be a dead giveaway. This isn't Adrian because she's leaping several stories in a single bound. And Ladybug notices and the gives chase, you know. Lila creates havoc in the streets that Ladybug has to help avoid and you know she starts to put herself in peril to get Ladybug to save her and then take use the opportunity to kiss Ladybug sending into her sleep and stealing her miraculous but Ladybug catches on to this and a fight ensues which I love I was like love the fact that Ladybug caught on so quickly however Ladybug thinks the Akuma's in um 
you know, Lila's hat. She doesn't know that it's Lila either. She just knows that it's an akumatized person. So she doesn't know where the object of power is. Meanwhile, Adrian wakes up because Lila kissed someone else. And he transforms into Cat Noir. Meanwhile, Ladybug continues to look for Chameleon, only to be ambushed by this young kid who is Chameleon in disguise. Only for Cat Noir to intervene, taking the brunt, but falling asleep yet again. Adrian cannot catch a break in this episode. So, once again, Chameleon is powered up and, of all things, unleashes Cat Noir's Cataclysm to try to take down Ladybug, and their fight takes them all the way up to the top of the Eiffel Tower. Ladybug brings out her Lucky Charm, which is, in fact, a t-shirt. Um, Ladybug then, you know, ends up kind of pretty much overwhelmed, but, you know, uses the, um... Chameleon's own cataclysm to break through the bottom, bring them to the uh, food buffet where there's clams, um, and causes Chameleon to kiss one of the clams, transforming Chameleon into a clam, which I'm like, that shouldn't probably work that way since it's not a living creature, but I, I guess Chameleon's abilities don't extend to just... F um, you know, living being, so that's a little bit odd. So, you know, Cat Noir wakes up and he's just like, yeah, I know who this person is, you'll be interested to find out as well. And as Ladybug opens up the clam and gets the pearl inside and cracks it open to set everything back to rights, it's revealed that it's Lila. You know, and Lila tries to reconcile with Ladybug, Ladybug saying, hey, you don't have to lie in order to get people to like and trust you only for Lila to you know as soon as Ladybug leaves he's just like yeah no Lila is not joining the side of good and righteousness anytime soon much to the light of Hawk Moth who sees a potential ally in Lila so it's very much like how I was wondering how Chloe would become since she's supposed to be a more just and you know kinder character from here on out at least hopefully I was wondering who the ultimate antagonist would end up being once Chloe stops you know being the cause for a lot of people to turn into Akuma but Lila is showing the signs of being the person who will take that place as being the big menace for the rest of this season. And ultimately Marinette becomes a little bit annoyed since Lila continues to lie with her being rescued by Ladybug fueling her stories of being friends with Ladybug, which just serves to anger Marinette even more, and as Marinette goes to try to expose her yet again, Adrian calls her out and it's just like, look, maybe you shouldn't continue to keep trying to expose her. It's doing you no favors, and exposing her will do no one any favors. You know, revealing a villain's true motives and intentions will only serve to plunge them deeper into darkness, and Lila has a lot of that. So, you know, Adrian's just like, look, let it go, let her just do what she wants, you know, we know the truth, and that's all that matters. And one day, everyone else probably will, too. And, you know, it's sound advice. It's just like, it's causing nothing but harm for Marinette's reputation, so she should just let this go, because ultimately, you give Lila enough rope, and she'll hang herself. And so, as the seating arrangements leaves Marinette isolated, Adrian ultimately decides to go and sit with Marinette in order to keep her company. However, because she's so fixated on Adrian, Marinette ends up being asked to come to the front of the class. This causes Lila to be like, yay, my tinnitus has gotten better and has taken a turn for the best, so I can sit in the back now. And Alia switches seats in order to sit with Marinette. Adrian's like, yo, how about I just go up and sit with Nino since he's with my best friend. And ultimately, everyone ends up resitting in their seats from 
you know, all the previous seasons with Lila in the far back. However, Lila does end up confronting Marinette since, you know, it's the end of the school day, and she ultimately threatens Marinette saying that, you know, since you're against me, that means I'm going to make your life in school a living hell. You will have no friends and no one to love you by the time I'm done with you. And Marinette, like a boss, is just like, yeah, whatever. And just pieces off, just leaving Lila stunned. I love this. I, I love Marinette here. It's just like, yeah, just walk away. Don't even bother with her because she ain't worth your time. You're like, this girl ain't worth your time, Marinette. Go on with your bad self. So she leaves Lila to stew and just, you know, cause her own downfall, basically. However, Lila declares that Marinette is now a lifelong enemy, and so now the two girls both clash inside their um, transformed forms and out. So Lila will now be the newer antagonist for this season. At least hopefully, at least hopefully we'll keep that running theme going, where Lila kind of tries to instigate certain situations to bring out Ladybug and take her miraculous and ultimately destroy her. You know, and it's an interesting way to go because it's just like Lila is a much more interesting villain than Chloe. You know, I say villain, but Chloe, you know, kind of inadvertently causes a lot of akumatizations just because she's so bratty. But here, Lila could probably cause a lot of akumatizations willingly serving as an agent of Hawk Moth, which I kind of enjoy. I, I like the idea of him just having this ally in the quest to take down Ladybug. So it's a very interesting way to take things. And you know, naturally, Lila's probably gonna cause La uh, Marinette and Ladybug no end of headaches. It's just great that at least those two know. But I'm I'm probably gonna get really frustrated over the fact that everyone else will just eat up her act. But you know, that's all I have to say for this episode. Tell me your thoughts on this episode in the comment section below. Do you like the fact that Lila seems to be the new rival on the block and we'll be seeing much more of her, at least hopefully, down the line in this season? You know, do you think that, are you frustrated like I was that, you know, so many people are just buying into her act? Well, at least the other Miraculous holders, uh, Chloe, Nino, and Alia end up finding out that Lila is less than as scrupulous as she seems. You know, I mean, I hate that they don't trust Marinette enough, but as seen with the season um, 2 finale, Marinette does have a tendency to fudge the truth given certain situations, especially when it comes to Adrian, so there's at least precedence for it. But again, tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. If you liked what I had to say during this episode review, leave me a like. If you didn't like what I had to say, leave me a dislike and tell me what I'm doing wrong, and subscribe for more episode reviews of Miraculous Ladybug. A new challenger has appeared. Bye bye